This is the law of conservation of momentum in two dimensions. The situation is you have a 200 kilogram cannon with a 5 kilogram ball inside it moving east at 20 meters per second. It's about 45 miles per hour, maybe without any kind of actual friction force between the ground and the road, this could be a tank. Maybe it's a ship traveling along, but anyway, you have a cannon moving east at 20 meters per second with a ball inside, a total mass of 205 kilograms. Cannonball is fired at 500 meters per second, 330 degrees. Your job is to find the velocity of the cannon at the end. So the first thing we do in these situations is read the problem carefully, clearly picture in your head exactly what this thing shows, and then sketch a picture before and to sketch a picture after. <clears throat> cannon, here's the cannon sitting on its stand with the cannonball inside it, total of 205 kilograms. 205 kilograms moving east at 20 meters per second. That's the picture that shows everything you have before. Because you know that the momentum beforehand, vectorally, is equal to the momentum after, like vectors. So, we have that, and then we have the cannonball being fired down in that direction, and this is 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, and 30 degrees short of one full circle would be where that thing is going. So this is 30 degrees... 500 meters per second and 5 kilograms. I know everything about that cannonball and I really don't know much of anything about the cannon except for the fact that that thing is going to recoil somewhere in probably that first quadrant. So the speed is unknown, mass is 200 kilograms. Looking for the speed and the direction of that thing up there and I have everything I need to know for the cannonball. So remember that the momentum before the collision, or in this case the explosion, is equal to the momentum after the explosion for this recoil problem. At the beginning, this thing is moving at 20 meters per second, 205 kilograms. So you can sketch over here a single vector, all east, showing this 205 kilograms times 20 meters per second for 1, 0, 0, kilogram meters per second of momentum all in the east direction. That is the initial momentum and it's the final momentum. So remember that in the eastern direction, all positive x, you have all the momentum before and all the momentum after. Which means that at the end, this one over here is going to be in this quadrant. That one up there has to probably be in that quadrant to get this initial and final momentum to be true. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> so then afterward, this is before, and afterward you can sketch a triangle which shows that 5 kilograms times 500 meters per second is 2,500 kilogram meters per second. 2,500 kilogram meters per second. 30 degrees, right triangle. And then take your trusty calculator and quickly place in there 2,500 cosine 30, enter, 2,500 sine 30, enter, and you get two values. The small one goes in the small side, 1250 kilogram meters per second. Big one goes over here, which is 2165, 2165 kilogram meters per second. Now that triangle is completely defined because all the information for this one was completely defined. So that's all done. Then we take a look at that triangle up there for the momentum. Remember these are momentum triangles and it's going to probably go in that direction. You're going to have an X component that looks like that, a Y component that looks like that, and then the momentum of the object is going to be that one, the momentum of the cannon. So this is the cannon ball, this is the cannon, and the two of them together have to make this. So this is the before, and that is the after. So we have to end up with all east. So if this is 1250 in the negative y direction, this has to be positive 1250 in the y direction. Positive 1250 kilogram meters per second. Probably should write that 1250. 1250 kilogram meters per second. And then in the x direction, this 2165 
plus whatever this x is has to equal this 4,100. So you take 4,100 minus, that's the total, minus the 2,165 minus 2,165 equals 1,935. 91935 9, kilogram meters per second. So you have this momentum for the cannon, that momentum of the ball, you have the two components, x and y components. You can now put those two together, get the hypotenuse and the direction with the angle. Calculator again, second function, square root of the quantity, 1250 squared plus 1935 squared equals 2304. 2304 kilogram meters per second. That's the final momentum of the cannon up there. Then the direction, inverse tangent, second function, tangent of opposite, 1250 divided by the adjacent, 1935 equals 32.9 degrees. So 32.9 degrees. It's a first quadrant angle, and if this is zero and that's 90, this would be actually 32.9 degrees. No need to modify that. So then that's the momentum, but I don't really want the momentum. I want the velocity. I'm looking for the velocity up here for that thing. And so P equals mv for the cannon. The momentum, 2304 kilogram meters per second. 2304 kilogram meters per second equals 200 kilograms times V. The direction is going to be in the same, it is going to be the same. 2304 divided by 200 equals 11.5. So the speed is 11.5 meters per second, and the direction would be the same thing as that one, 32.9 degrees. 32.9 degrees. Remember, momentum is a vector. So as a result, the x components and the y components should be the same for the before and for the after when you put those two together. And in this case, we have a total of all x, 4,100 kilogram meters per second, according to the initially described situation. Then at the end, we've got two separate ones, and this one and that one, and then you split them into their components with the triangle, and just look at the x's and look at the y's, figure it out, and then go back to the momentum equation to find the velocity, 11.5 meters per second. And again, the direction of the momentum is the direction of the velocity because momentum and velocity are both vectors in that vector equation. The law of conservation of momentum in two dimensions.